Hi. So I'll tell you where we got up to was the family and the family liaison. And it is interesting this. Uh, you know, they even balls that up. Do you know what I mean? The police, not only they made the right uh, bollocks of, um, you know, not cordoning off the scene, not declaring it a critical uh, whatever, you know, all the things that we've gone through in the other videos, which at least they are saying, but you know, it doesn't help really. At least they're acknowledging that they did it wrong. Some of the things, not everything. Um, but uh, they didn't even get the family and family liaison right. He didn't get anything right. It sounds like it was a bit chaotic to me because you'll see as we go through this report, Pauline Stables was supposed to be the one that was going to be the fact, you know, that she gave the actual family statement at, after Nicola was found, you know, that slated the media. Pauline Stables, well, that press conference that um, Rebecca did, we find out in this report she wasn't supposed to be doing that press conference. Pauline Stables either really was ill or just decided she was ill and Rebecca had to do it. So you do end up feeling a little bit more sorry for Rebecca because she actually said she didn't feel that she was competent, not competent enough, but that she knew enough to, you know, take this press conference. And um, anyway, that comes up later on. I don't know if it will come up with what we'll do today. We'll do as much as we can today. But, you know, I don't want to be, I could be on here for five hours reading the whole thing out because we're only on page 39. There's 143 pages. And I've already, this is the fourth part, I think. So, yeah, it did make me feel, feel a little bit of sympathy for Rebecca because she said that she didn't feel comfortable doing that press conference. And maybe that's why she was so defensive because she just didn't want to be there, did she? She didn't want to be there because apparently it was Pauline Stables who was supposed to be there. But she suddenly, she had a mysterious illness. I think I would have had a mysterious illness as well. You'd be like, oh, no, I'm going to think I can feel I've got COVID. COVID, uh, you know, would be the perfect thing to say because nobody can make you come in if you've got COVID. Okay, so family and family li liaison. The College of Policing's Investigation, APP, sets out the procedures in relation to the deployment and use of family liaison support and structures. The guidance states that an FLO can be used across a broad spectrum of investigations, including murder and manslaughter, fatal road traffic collisions, mass fatality incidents, rail fatalities or critical incidents where family liaison might enhance the effectiveness of the police response. Now, I don't know where, where would Nicola have fitted into those? Murder and manslaughter. So there was no foul play, supposedly. That's interesting. Anyway, the APP states that the deployment of an FLO is determined by a police investigation not because a crime has been definitively de determined. Takes into consideration the practice advice for family liaison officers, blah, blah, blah. Now, I'm, I'm going to wish through a little bit because I think the actual rules and things I don't need to read out. And as I say, you can go on anytime and find this on the internet if you want to actually read every single little bit. But I'm going to try and just read the... Uh, the things that I think are of interest to us and because I don't want you to get bored either. Okay, so on Sunday the 28th of January, the on-call investigating officer with oversight from the on-call SIO did not undertake a formal deployment of an FLO or single point of contact to support the family during this time. The view of the on-call SIO was that this was a missing from home investigation and did not meet the criteria for an FLO. And it would not be standard practice for a high-risk uh, MFH investigation. So this, again, this is the problem. It was not declared a critical incident, but it was felt to be standard, a standard, relatively standard, 
if unusual, missing person investigation. During this first weekend, the on-call investigating officers stated that there was no media presence at the scene, but that members of the community were present and searching for Nicola. So this is that literally that just when it first started. Oh, my God, how it changed. Anyway, when the new SIO was appointed on the morning of the 30th of January, media interest in the case had grown significantly. Now, why did media interest grow significantly? It was the mystery because PA, he hadn't actually done his interview by then, had he? So it wasn't because of that, the interest, because he didn't do an interview for a week, did he? You know, these are, these are you know, a few strange things. But why did the media interest grow? I think it was because it was the mystery, wasn't it, of just those things left there. Um, now, what, you know, the, the decoys, a video I was just watching before, a video that I made, that I've had to take down because it just seems ridiculous now, was Peter Folding, you know, say, comparing Nicola's case to another murder investigation he'd worked on where somebody left their shoe on the side of uh, the murderer, left their shoe. Let me see, who. what was the name of that? I, I don't know if I left it up on here. But anyway, it was a video where... Peter was talking to the mainstream media and he did actually compare it to a murder investigation or it wasn't a murder investigation at the time. The murderer had left a shoe at the side of the river to make it look as if the person had got the girl, the woman had gone into the river. And it was Peter talking about that, that he, he felt there were similarities with that. This is why I feel a little bit betrayed by Peter. Because, you know, these are all the things he said. He didn't just say nothing and keep it all to himself. He was out there saying, actively saying, that he was comparing this to a, a murder inquiry and things. So, you know, that that's the resentment I feel towards Peter that's, you know, he was either not telling the truth then or he's not telling the truth now. They can't all be true. But anyway, we'll see. So we'll see when the evidence comes out. So the incident was not declared a critical incident, but it was felt to be a relatively standard, if unusual, missing person investigation. So due to the increased media coverage, the incident had reached the attention of the family liaison for strategic lead. And it was them who told the review that by the morning of the 30th of January, they felt it may have been a critical incident. So it wasn't declared a critical incident until the 30th of January. They held a conversation on this date with the NCA National Family Liaison Officer. And they said that, having been aware of the extensive media coverage, they felt that it did fit the criteria criteria of a critical incident requiring a formal FLO deployment and strategy. The National Family Liaison Advisor believed in the wake of other high profile investigations that it was proportionate to deploy FLOs and that the media intrusion and scrutiny made it suitable. Yeah, because normally your family liaison officer, they sort of protect the family from the press or they tell them when there's is the right time to go to the press you know they're there for the family because the family won't have a clue how to handle the press if they've never you know they're just suddenly projected uh, in this you know into this world that they don't know anything about they won't know anything about it um so yeah then they did need a family liaison officer uh, to to guide them anyway they didn't get one uh, well they did eventually but actually i don't think they ever got a, f a family liaison officer a proper one so the fsl contacted the sio so so it's the family liaison service that 
contacted the SIO. It wasn't the SIO that decided they needed a family liaison officer. They literally, that department contacted them and invited them to consider a formal deployment of an FLO and a discussion ensued. I think this whole case as well has been about like uh, squabbles, squabbles, egos, uh, stubbornness, not re not taking help, not asking for help. Instead of just all getting together and thinking we've got one job here between us, which is to find this poor woman and, and the, you know, help out this family, these poor two girls who've lost their mum. It, it seems like it was all a big just... Uh, the more squabbling between themselves about what they should do or what they shouldn't do. Anyway, they stated uh, they re on, on the 30th of January, they recorded a decision regarding family support, stating that a Spock, you know, they, once they start using these initials, I'm gone, but anyway, never mind, is to be identified to provide a means of direct contact with the family. So, in their rationale behind the decision, the SIO considered whether a trained FLO should be deployed, but he was satisfied at the time it wasn't necessary. Oh, God, they, they just had no clue, did they? Anyway, they believed at that time that an officer with knowledge of the investigation and the skills of an FLO would be adequate. An officer was identified who was an accredited FLO but would perform the role of Spock. The SIO documented that they had discussed with this with the FSL and they recorded that the decision would be reviewed as the investigation progressed. So in the first week, Nicola's family, let me just make sure you're all okay. God. Oh God, I've got 42 comments there. Are you all okay? You're all okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. You're all okay. Uh, so, in the first week, and I think this is very, very important, Nicola's family asked about media engagement and were advised that support from the press office of Lancashire Constabulary's team was available to them. However, no contact appears to have been made until later in the investigation. The family complained of being inundated with contact from some elements of the media and wanted it to end. Now, this is the mainstream media. So, you know, we're not uh, uh, the... This is, oh, God, it just makes you so angry with the mainstream media. I'll be whinged about all the social media because they're threatened by social media. But it was them that were inundating the family right from day one. Um, and they wanted it to end. Mr. Ansell and Nicholas family would have un understandably felt liaison with the media would provide publicity and would improve the chances of finding Nicola. This became challenging for the joint police and family engagement and appeals. They never appeared altogether, except at that, that press conference after Nicola was found, when Pauline Stables read out that statement that was scathing. Uh, but before that, the police and the family had never appeared together. Never, not once. And that caused speculation, didn't it? You know, that to me, I was thinking, well, why are the, you know, why are the police not there when Paul's making an interview or when uh, Ernie and Dot are making an interview? Why are the police not there? So that caused speculation as well. So they totally made a bollocks of that as well, didn't they? And I sort of almost feel sorry for Paul in a way. And they said, I don't, not too much, you know, because I don't know what happened. And I'm not saying that Paul had anything to do with that. I'm just saying there is concern there uh, for various reasons, mainly being the welfare check and the trip to A&E the following day. But, you know, I don't know. But I, I sort of almost felt sorry for him and the others because they're just out there like... Um, you know, renegades, like, no no advice, nobody saying to them, look, you'd probably be better off not to say that or, you know, trying to manage them. They're just out there saying, you know, it, 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 
just cold really they don't know how to deal with the media anyway uh but at the same time they wanted contact with the media because this is what they're saying here because they wanted to find out what happened to nicola so you you know what would you do like the media is there say they can give you all this um publicity you want the publicity but then of course you can totally make a, a balls of it by you know saying the wrong thing or you know it, it wouldn't be the first time that that has happened so again that to me this is an example of the police not controlling what's going on it's up to the police to control what's going on that's what they get paid for that's they're paid you know uh, they are <laughs> paid to protect the public and whatever paul and the family and everything they they were it was the police's job to the police are supposed to be the experienced ones you know the families of the victims whoever the victim is they're not experienced with the media etc are they you know they're they're not so it's up to the police to help them with that anyway so this became challenging so there's obviously some arguments going on here because this came challenging it became challenging for the spoc seeking to secure joint police and family engagement and appeals that never happened until nicola was found so recognizing the vastly increasing media and social media attention in the case the sio reviewed their decision about family liaison on the third of February. So this is a week after Nicola's gone missing. Seven days after this investigation commenced, they reviewed their decision. They recorded a further policy decision to oversee the deployment of an FLO and to produce an FLO strategy. Seven days later before they decided that. The rationale for this decision was recorded as being due to the scale of the media attention the investigation was now attracting to support the family and secure their trust and confidence. <coughs> the formulation of the strategy was given to an appointed FLC to be overseen by the FSL. The role of the SPOC was changed to that of an FLO. A further officer was deployed who had completed the appropriate FLO training, providing two FLOs as a support. Finally, by increasing the flow resourcing and structure in this way, the CO, it's probably easier for me to say it that way, was able to provide better levels of support to and management of the family because you've got a double-edged sword edge sword there they're trying to support the family but also they've got to manage what the family are doing the strategy was to incorporate amongst other objectives the number of flows to be deployed and the information for the family and media on the 7th of february further contact was made by the ceo with the fsl where the ceo expressed concerns regarding the challenges being experienced by the flows in relation to the family's engagement with the media the ceo asked the fsl to provide additional review and oversight to the family liaison support okay i'm just get the next bit is a bit of blah 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 so it seems like finally then after seven days they started to look into more all these things the family dynamics an anti-mortem preceding death section the fsl described the family liaison situation as being chaotic and hectic at times given the challenges that the flows were experiencing around family engagement and the media i don't know about you but it just feels like it's total chaos total chaos and not controlling anything and that's why i think emma was just allowed to go off and do all these interviews left and, and it, we were all like why is she doing all these interviews why you know because nobody was controlling anything she was they were just left like it's like machine gun fire wasn't it She's just going off to, and paul ringing sky news and leaving a, a voice note nobody was 
you know, advising him. Well, that's how it seems. To be fair, that the, the um, Lancashire police were just, just like, oh, we'll just get on with it. I mean, what? So somebody was not controlling. So the and really, the book has got to stop with the person who's in control of the investigation. So is it was that Rebecca? Was that Pauline Stables? I'm not sure. Anyway. Several discussions were held regarding the family's interaction with the media. Ten days into the investigation, it was recognised that it was now hard to regain control. The overriding advice of the National Family Liaison Officer was any releases of information into the media should be with the prior notice and ideally consent of the family while recognising that the wishes of the family must also be balanced with the needs of the investigation and the SIO. I think basically what they could just put is, well, there is lots of other important things, but you feel like you could go to the bottom of this report and just put the balls, the whole thing up. <laughs> you know, that's what you can interpret. The whole thing was balls up from day, uh, from day one really so we're on day 10 by now before they're trying to get a grip and now it's too late it's too late because it's all spiraled out of control anyway uh so it also advised an assessment and full understanding of the role of nicola's family friend who acted as a community spokesperson as well as the nature of updates to the, this family friend, given their relationship and engagement with the media. Now, remember, we've watched videos and Emma, you know, uh, she, she likes organising things. She's an organiser. She, there was a, a void there and she was in it. And she probably paid for that with her own uh, reputation, if you like, because then people are sort of like, Oh, why is she always there? Why is she always got this to say, got that to say? And, you know, um, but then if she hadn't have done it, who would have done it? You know, so I don't know. She acted as a community spokesperson. I don't think they were even that good friends. You know, I wouldn't, you don't get that if, if from all the sort of research I've done and the videos I've done. I wouldn't say, it says fam, Nicola family friend, Nicola's family friend, but... You didn't feel like they were like best buddies or, you know, I don't know who Nicola's true friends were. You know, I've looked at that over and over again. No, none of them cried. None of them got really upset. Nobody seemed to care. This is what really upsets me. It's like, who cared about Nicola? The only people I've seen that genuinely seem to care about Nicola are her um, mum and dad. Oh, I'm going to show you a little video, actually, where you tell me whether you think PA was genuinely crying on it. Anyway, conclusions. So the decision not to declare this as a critical incident is likely to have influenced decisions about the deployment of FLOs or flows. This led to flow support being deployed too late. Could it? Duh, seven days after Nicola's disappearance. And, yeah, where was Paul in that time? Maybe that's why he didn't appear. And then that's why it looked strange when he did suddenly pop up. And he was grinning and, you know, it wasn't controlled. But anyway, without the flow structure in place, it was more difficult for Lancashire Constabulary to provide guidance to the family regarding the media at a time when the media and public scrutiny was increasing. The flow structure would also uh, have triggered associated what? The flow structure would also triggered that doesn't make sense. Associated victim support opportunities. Earlier focus on flow structure is likely to have reduced the challenges experienced. Well, this is it. So they didn't dig it. really basically. I think what the total balls up stems from is the not declaring it of a critical as a critical incident it all comes from that doesn't it it would have been a whole different story might not have changed the fact that Nicola died of course it wouldn't you know uh, Nicola probably by then was already deceased unfortunately 
won't change that, but it might have changed this whole climate of mystery and that came out of it. And anyway, as the extent and intensity of media attention grew, and with the family receiving media handling advice from different sources, it became increasingly challenging for the flows to operate. This contributed to Lancashire Constabulary's inability to retain or regain control of the media narrative. Aye. Use of nationally agreed templates and documents might have assisted those with oversight of the flow's engagement and activity. Forces would benefit from this aspect by confirming that their current arrangements are in line with nationally recognised guidance. Recommendations, the MPCC lead for family liaison should consider a communication to all forces to remind them of the importance of adherence to nationally agreed templates and recording documents. So finally, on the 10th of February, the SIO increased the number of flows from two to four in order to meet the increasing demands and challenges of the investigation and to further aid the family liaison support, the CO visited the family to explain their approach. There was a collect. Oh, let's go back down to this. So, uh, they. Okay, so there was an the header that should be made. So that they decided that a direct approach should be made by the head of the M and E team to meet with Mr. Ansel and Nicholas family friend who acted as a community spokesperson. Now listen to this. So they de finally decided they should meet up with Mr. Ansel and Emma. Uh, why? I don't know. Why not Mr. Ansel and Louise? Uh, the purpose was to encourage a joint approach to media engagement. Maybe Louise had asked Emma to take over, so I don't know. I'm just asking the question. The purpose was to encourage a joint approach to media engagement between the family and the police and to secure better factual influence of the narrative to the media. On the 10th of February, we conducted a meeting with Nicola's family friend. Mr Ansell was unable to attend. Now, I've got to come back to you to see what you're saying about that, if you've seen that. Mr. So they arranged a meeting and Mr. Ansel did not attend. You know, what do you think? Hi, Irish eyes. Oh, look, they're all they're all thinking with the house. Have, did you have did you hear this? Right, there are, I can sit. So, have we decided that it is the house? Now, did you hear what I just said there, though? So, a meeting was arranged and only Emma turned up and Mr. Ansel could not attend. I, I find that really strange. How could he not attend? That should have been the, the most crucial thing for him to be at. Anyway, so it all seems. Oh, this. I can see your uh, thingy with the house, but anyway, well, you tell me if you if you're if you're the police force had organised the meeting finally for you with a family liaison officer to dis, uh, discuss, you know, uh, how to deal with the media and the, the the disappearance of your partner, you, you wouldn't go. You did. You were would be unable. I mean, what would the reason be? What would the reason be? Anyway, to me, it's strange. So let's go back. Uh, so Mr. An Answer was unable to attend. The flows deploy. I mean, maybe he was ill. I don't know. Maybe he was ill. Maybe, maybe I don't. I don't know. So the flows deployed to the Bully family experienced significant challenges relating to the media handling issues generated by the investigation. 
On a number of occasions, they were placed in the position of seeking views from the family on media issues, advising them around their media engagement and facilitating the drafting of family media statements. All of the flows deployed during the investigation were consulted as part of this review. Now listen to this. And none of them had received any training in this media handling aspect of their role. They'd not had any training. You couldn't make it up, could you? A number of the most challenging moments in the investigation involved either family media statements or police media lines that the family were not content with. These included the family media statement on the 20th of February, which is detailed later, and the controversy relating to the release by police of sensitive personal information about Nicola on the 15th of February. On both of these occasions, the flows were asked to fulfil a role for which they had not been trained and did not have previous experience in such a high-profile case. Well, there you go. It really inspires you with confidence, doesn't it? There was a critical need for someone with relevant media training and experience to assist in this family media handling role. The M&E team were drawn in to help on occasion, but were not close enough to the family. to provide the assistance that was needed. This would have likely helped Lancashire Constabulary to better manage the broadcast interviews that the family gave, which instead were managed by a family friend. So they left Emma to be, you know what we were saying on some of the interviews, well, Emma, it's like she's like the police, like she's, you know, uh, conducting the investigation. Well, she was, she was left to do it because the police didn't do it. You know, so she just took over it because that's the sort of person she is and someone had to do it, I suppose. So the conclusions were the flows FLC and FSL all demonstrated a high level of care, professionalism and dedication to the investigation. I mean, they're just directly contradicting what they've just said to Nicola's family. They worked extensive hours, provided high level of accessible contact for the family off duty, which makes me wonder then when Paul rang Sky News and left a voice note, why did he do that? Why didn't he talk to his FLO? All four floats were trained, accredited and relatively, exper relatively experienced in family liaison. Each flow has strongly emphasized the unprecedented nature of this investigation and the challenges experienced in particular relating to the media and social media. So it's all our fault again now. The flows praise the leadership, accessibility and support provided by both the CO and the FSL during their deployments. They fully recognise the value of this high level of engagement and support to their roles. It's clear that it was an extremely dynamic and fast-paced uh, investigation. While this was not an exceptional case, but due to the media and public scrutiny, it's not wholly unprecedented in policing and could occur at any time. It's unlikely that other forces and individuals in the future will also experience such a deployment. Anyway, now listen to this. It's identified that the training delivered by the FLOWS course has only incorporated a media element for two th since 2020. So only for three years has, have they even been started training on media. As a co consequence, a high proportion of nationally trained FLOWS have training that predates 2020 with no guidance in that's what I was saying earlier. They're outdated. They haven't caught up. But I do think it's because they're not resourced properly. I know we're blaming the police. And I do blame them. But I also blame the lack of resources. And I've said that from the beginning. They can only do what they can do with the resources that they've got. So, you know, we have to think they, they, they have to be funded properly. 
Flow training is delivered by forces and there is no national quality assurance to ensure consistency. And prior to 2020, it was not part of the flow role expectation to provide media guidance to a family. But this requirement has since been introduced, has been introduced since the Curse Lake report after the Manchester Arena bombing. Now, what I, I, you know, and I want to cover that one day when I finished with the this report and the Peter Folding statement. These last bits of and you know I need to do something different, and I know it's not not exactly cheerful, but I want to do something different because then there'll be no, there won't be anything more to say at the moment about the Nicola Bully case until maybe Peter comes up with his evidence. Um, you know we have to. See but this is definitely something I'd look into. So this, has, that that occurrence in 2017 has brought in this um, flow role uh, uh, expectation to provide media gu guidance. Before that, they didn't. Now, things do have, so, you know, social media has caught on rapidly, hasn't it? So it's to do. So the gap in media expertise increases the risk both to the family and to the investigation. And this is increased further when a family conducts their own media engagement, even if or albeit with good intentions. And, you know, this is what they're saying that happened, that the family basically were just left to get on with it on their own. And the person who did that was Emma, really, most of the time, wasn't it? So the recommendations were that the College of Policing should work with the MPCC to consider how to address the identified skills and resourcing gap for media engagement guidance to families. This is a key gap in investigations of this nature. In addressing this gap, consideration should also be given how guidance can be provided to those outside the family who may be acting as spokesperson or point of contact for the media in high profile investigations you know and it's good it does make me feel a bit you know because i've all we've always questioned about why was it emma all the time this sort of does go somewhere towards explaining it, it was emma because there was a void otherwise now that's as far as i'm going today because chapter two is leadership and that will be the next section now bear in mind i'm only on page 47 let me just write that down, actually, so that I remember where I'm starting from. That's what we'll be looking at next, leadership, the decision to not declare a critical incident. And we, I think, I think we know that that is like a, a crucial, that was a crucial problem. That was a crucial problem. OK, so I've missed loads of chat because I was... Uh, God, Jack's dog trying to get out of his bedroom. They should have accepted help. Yeah, it's all crazy. It's all crazy. Uh, crazy. But they did. They cocked it up. I knew they cocked it up. But I do think, uh, you know, they're, um, oh, look. Oh, Rio. Okay. So there you go. Yeah, we justice for Nicola, but we, you know, we want to see some evidence, don't we? You know, from Peter, we want to see his evidence. There's no good in saying this, and he's another one now. He's going off shooting his mouth off here, there, and everywhere. Come on, Peter, let's see the evidence. We want to see the evidence. I'm, I'm over uh, experts and police and whatever. I just want to know what is the evidence and who is going to bring justice for Nicola, who actually cares about Nicola and not about themselves, not about their own um, reputation, but actually cares about, um, actually cares about uh, Nicola. So I, I think Nicola, on Monday, Nicola was lost in it all. There was nothing about Nicola. Anyway, now, when we look into this, we you'll see we do they do talk a little bit about the um, welfare check, but they don't mention at all the following night when she had to go to A and E because she supposedly banged her head 
slipping on water from the dog's bowl. They don't mention that. Hi, Maggie. You got your vino? Julie's been asleep. Oh, I can always send people off to sleep, really. Easy. Yeah, Laurie, that's the other thing. They've all let her down. I think every who in the, who hasn't let Nicola down? You know the police, even Peter now. All this not knowing, you know, you know, we're, um, the police that turned up that day didn't. I, I think he did have the webcam on. The, I I think he did. They, for some reason, they're not releasing that webcam. Another thing that they say, which you'll see, is they they go on to say, "Oh, no arrests were made." We would be looking. Well, why would there have been any arrest if it was just a simple, uh, well, say a simple, if it was just a concern for welfare? Why would arrests have been made? I think that call was about domestic violence. I do. And the other thing is, there's some dispute now because at the inquest, Louise said that she phoned, didn't it? It was said at the inquest that Louise phoned the ambulance. But in this report, it says that Paul did. So, you know, there's. Um... No, Willow did it. Willow didn't let her down. Poor Willow just couldn't do anything, could she? But, uh... <sighs> so there you go. That's the latest. I hope you found it interesting. Oh, Catherine, you're going to have to catch up from the beginning. I'm literally just finishing off now. So, but thank you, Art. Do you know when I do a members live, <clears throat> it's just the same as doing um, you know, a normal live. I have that many people on here, it's lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, uh, uh, Jackie, I couldn't have said it better myself. A shower of that, anyway. So, well, we'll carry on with the next bit. There's lots more to come. I tell you, this is this is like um, it's like a series, you know, like because as you can, you know, I've read it all now, or more. I mean, I've scan read it a little bit, bits of it, but I've read most of it, and also people have very kindly, you know, sent me their thoughts on it and that. So they have picked out things, you know, that they think are important. That's helped me, you know. I've got, I've had so many emails about this report. Uh, one person said to me, it's taken them five hours to sit and read through it and go through it and take put. But it's so vast, you could sit through it ten times, go through it, and you would always find other little bits. So, yeah. Oh, night. So, night. Um, gosh, I need a register to say good night as well. Yeah, the append I haven't even got to the appendices yet, Maria. I'm just I've just gone through the um you know the actual thing. But yeah, you've got the appendices. Oh anyway. It's good that we've got it though. It's good that we've got it. We asked for it. Now we've certainly got it. What we make of it is a whole nother thing. So thank you so much and I'll see you tomorrow, definitely at some point tomorrow with the next instalment. If I knew how to do the EastEnders drum roll, it'd be like, you know, and I'm, I'm not being flippant saying that. I'm just trying to bring it a bit of levity to this, you know, situation. But it is, it's like that, you know, do, 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 waiting for the next um, instalment. But yes, I think it is detailed, Maria. And so I think that is a good thing. So anyway. Okay, so remember to live and love carefully, wisely. Until I see you again, may your gods go with you. And thank you so much for being members. Thank you for being here with me. And uh, hasta mañana. See you tomorrow. Bye.